Right, well, hello, folks, and welcome to uh, podcast 116 from Kitchen Garden Magazine. We're all here together. I'm here with Emma and Tony, and we're hello. sheltering from the rain today, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, soggy out it's there. Horrible. It's horrible out there. I'm not going out there. <laughs> so we thought we'd sit inside and chat instead, which is what we're best at, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but keeping warm and dry. But we thought today we'd have a, a little chat. We're, we're in February now, sort of mid-February, and um, have a little ch- chat around the jobs that you can do in, on the plot or, or in the greenhouse, preferably, probably, at this time of year. But um, if, you, if you're a regular reader of the magazine, you'll, you'll have seen our jobs pages, so we'll just have a little chat around some things which... Um, you might be doing at this time of year. It doesn't pay to start too early, really, does it? But certainly not sowing outside. Wait till the soil is a bit warmer, I think, for sowing out in the garden. No, I don't think you'd be sowing anything particularly outside at the moment, would you? I mean, I think about the no. only thing they always, the only thing they traditionally say, don't they? Is it's always on the seed packets sometimes. Is sow your parsnips oh, yeah. from February, but I don't think I've ever sown any parsnips from February. I think I've usually waited till March. It or is always February, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> the soil's just too wet and cold for anything, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, sowing inside. <clears throat> inside's the thing then. So what, anybody got anything going? Well, funny you Steve. should mention that, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon you've got some hidden up your sleeve, as it were, somewhere. I have. What so have you got? Aubergines. I've got aubergines. Oh. I've got a couple of varieties this year. Yeah. I've got, I've got one, one which I'm, I'm looking at here is um, called Turkish Orange, which I've never grown before. And this wow. is from Tomasetti seeds. That's a really unusual old heritage variety. Oh, and apparently- it, does, it does fruit orange, does it? Yeah, you know, yeah, it's well, orange yeah. colour. I haven't seen an orange aubergine, I don't think. No, oh, sort of round orange fruit, more like a big chilli, I think. Yeah. Big pepper, but um, not chilli, yeah, sweet pepper. But um, yeah, sweet pepper, to, yeah. before they go orange, so they go, once they start to turn, you're supposed to pick them. But we've got a long way to go yet. So <laughs> um, just literally just come through us. I sowed on the, the 6th of February, so it's literally come up. Yeah. I've got some long purple ones as well, which are just the, the ordinary, you know, more of a communal garden one, which I grew last year and are really nice. I grew some long green ones as well, but they were a bit bitter, so I think I'd do those again. But did you start mm-hmm. those off um, on the windowsill then, in the warm or in a, in a propagator? Yeah. Did you start? In a little propagator, yeah, on the windowsill. Yeah, they're getting a bit stretched already. That's the trouble, mm, isn't it? Yeah. That, that's the problem, yeah. isn't it? Time, time of year. There's just not enough light. No, yeah. even in a bright window, still not enough light, really. Well, especially on day, it's nearly dark at the moment, yeah. Mm. Um, with, so, um, but yeah, so I don't sow tomatoes until next month. I don't know if any of you sow a bit earlier, but... No. Not for me. I've, I've, I've learned not to, to be honest. <laughs> I've stopped sowing... Um, any tomatoes in February? I have got some little chilies coming up. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, some new varieties. I've got hot Shakira, and I've been. I think I sowed them last week, and I've been staring at the the pot for every day virtually. And I've just noticed today they they're coming up, Ooh. and um, they're very very small. They're not as advanced as your aubergine, Steve, but. Uh, at least they've come up. I've only sowed about five or six, but they've been on a, a heated in a heated propagator. Mm. And I didn't think it was actually warm enough, so I actually put it on the radiator to give it a real boost of heat. And <laughs> actually, they, that's done the trick. They've all started sprouting up because I think with chili sometimes if you don't have them warm enough, they don't germinate. But you've got to you've got to give them a decent amount of heat over over twenty C, I'd say at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How will you grow them after that time? Are they going to go in your green in your greenhouse border or your polytunnel border? Or yeah. um, they'll, go, they'll go in pots in, in either the greenhouse or the polytunnel. But uh, it's 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 tricky, isn't it, with these? You have to keep sort of you know potting them on little by little into bigger pots, and then by about 
mid-May, you can probably put them outside in the greenhouse or whatever. But yeah. um, but you've got to you've got to start them early, haven't you, to get them you know ripe enough by by August. Yeah, that's why I've done my aubergines. Really, they need a long yeah. long season, don't they? Especially if we don't get particularly hot hot year. Mm. They were good last year, I have to say. We had plenty of well, enough sun at least, and they were pretty good. So I was quite pleased with them, but. I overdid it. I just grew too many. You can only eat so many aubergines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if you can freeze them. I'm not sure. But um, I've never frozen them, to be honest. No. no sure can. Tomatoes are fine, aren't they? You turn those into soup and stuff. And yeah. Stuff like but, yeah, I'm not so sure about the aubergines. Maybe someone can fill us in on if they, uh, how they store extra aubergines if they do. Yeah, I mean, chilies, chilies freeze quite well. I, I think I've got some probably several years old at the bottom of the big freezer, which I need to get rid of, you know, because you freeze loads of them and then you don't actually use them, do you? No, that's right. Yeah, yeah. What about your spuds? Have you got your spuds cheating yet? I, well, I have, yet. actually. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've got a couple. Um, I've got um, some Mary's Bard first early, I think, and, and Nicola... Second early, I only got them last week, so they're only just starting off. They're on oh, the windowsill. Yeah. Yeah. How about, yeah. Yeah, I've got I've, I've got some unusual varieties which I can't even pronounce. So oh. <laughs> I've got a black a black one, which doesn't Ooh. look black, covered in mud, but it's um they're just chitting. It's, it's called Vita. I don't know if this is right. Vita Lotti or 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 right. or. or but yeah, it's, it's supposed to be all more um, purple, really. Purple all the way through. Oh, all the way through, yeah. Yeah, old heritage one. Uh, 1850, apparently. Not not this oh. particular one, but yeah. So I'm going to try those. And I've got another one called 40 Fold. Uh -huh. which is another, I think they're both main crops. Yeah. Another old one. And that, that's supposed to have some um, some disease resistance, some uh, oh. blight resistance. But not come on very far yet. Tiny, tiny little shoots. I keep staring at these every day, like we do with your tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, mine aren't sitting particularly well yet. Got a no. few eyes there, but mm. I grew some purple ones years ago, and they're lovely to look at. But the family just wouldn't take to them. They just couldn't <laughs> get past the fact that they were purple. And, no, you know, they, they couldn't get beyond that. <laughs> Um, yeah, blue, blue mash is a bit weird. I didn't grow them again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I haven't planted mine yet. <laughs> Getting second thoughts <laughs> now. Cold feet. <food. laughs> I haven't is got much room for Is it just the skins that are purple then? Or are they, or are they all the way through? It's all purple. And does it, if it's purple, does it, does it retain its colour on cooking or? Well, is this one supposed to? I don't know whether it does or not, but it's supposed to. So they say, never grown it before. Um, but we'll see. No, it isn't appetising, is it? Blue potato mash, really. No. <laughs> I remember going to, um, I think it's Thompson and Morgan did a press a press day and they had red, white and blue potatoes. Did you, did you go oh, to that? Yeah, Sounds I remember so that. Yeah. 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 They're absolutely, I mean, yeah, if you shut your eyes and taste them, they're absolutely fine, aren't they? But it's just, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I got more used to red, ready, sort of orangey mash because we sometimes do sweet potatoes like that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no. Well, we're supposed to be preparing our seed beds at the moment as well, aren't we? I, I can see in my kitchen garden. Jobs for the month, but I don't think we'll be doing that for a little while. It's so just too wet. So wet, it really is. Unless you got some covered, I suppose. I, I, I didn't think far enough ahead to to cover any soil with some polythene or something. So that's going to have to wait. I've I've dug my trench for my beans though, filling that with compost. Oh, have you? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when I say compost, I'll bits from the kitchen. Mm. Yeah, that's quite a good idea, isn't it, to do that? You just yeah. literally dig a hole and or trench and then tip out your, your 
your green waste from the kitchen into it. Yeah. It just, that, it just creates a little bit of extra moisture, you know, holds on to yeah. the moisture, doesn't it? Oh, and, yeah. and probably feeds them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been trying that with squashes as well, but it's quite well with them. The squashes and all that sort of family, doesn't it? Cool jets and all those sorts of things. Mm. During a lot of food. So, yeah. I started off some uh, broad beans in because I always I love broad beans. So, I started some of those off in pots, but a bit slow yet. Nothing much happening with them. Just yeah. hope they don't uh, rot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a trouble, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't get around to yeah. it before the beans yet. I have to do that. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. 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 I support those for getting ready for the summer yeah um, yeah i think well black, be black currants as well black currants if you've got you know particularly you've got some really old bushes and you don't know what to do with them you can probably while they're dormant you can just trim out some of the old stems down to ground level probably yeah take out a third a third of the stems just to thin them out yeah and it's, I it's, well, it, it, it's probably a good time to start if you've got fruit cages and you know quite often in the winter you open them up don't you just to let the birds in and you know feed on any pests and whatever but it's starting to get to the stage where you probably need to start covering them up just to stop the bullfinches eating the buds yeah um, yeah that's another thing you could be doing if you've got fruit cages that's right yeah yeah i did um winter wash me my fruit trees recently um, but you know, I think you probably need to get it done fairly soon, before, certainly before they shoot, don't you? Um, it's just an organic winter wash. I mean, we used to use sort of tar oil and that sort of thing, but it's just a, um, an organic one now, just to help kill some of the, the insect eggs. But like you say, if you just leave them and the, the blue tits and things come round, don't they, and peck them off, keep them down for you without, without doing any spraying. That's always good. Should be um, when I do get sewing in the greenhouse. So put up your if you've got growing lights. Put up your growing lights. In fact, this is where I show off again. I bought some new growing lights. <laughs> got some. How about you? Um, I've treated myself to some LEDs. Oh, I've always wondered Ooh, what they're like. Wow. I'd be able to see if um, if if we're not doing this. Um, on sort of video, but um, yeah, so much smaller. Where I used to have growing lights that used to take up, you know, you could hardly lift the great big bulbs in them. These are just little LED ones. No idea how they work. Hmm. They've got a, got a fan in the top to keep them cool, although I don't think they make them. You just literally can't you just does it come with a plug and you just plug it in? and Yeah, yeah. So you can use it like in a growing tent or something like that indoors even if you want to. Mm. So you've got little switches on the top so you can, um, if you're just growing things, um, literally just like germinating things and you can use the one switch and you get one lot of lights on, one sort of colour of lights. But if you want to um, flower things and there's another switch and you get another colour of lights, so the red or blue, can't remember which is which. Well, if you put them both on, they all come on, which is good for your, uh, apparently be better for germinating seedlings. Wow. So, so you place that on top then, Steve, presumably. On, on, you yeah, just have, it over the top. It's got some wires on it. Yeah. How high, how high up do you have to have it above the... Oh, I see, yeah. Got you. You sort of have it, yeah. Probably mm. two or three, a couple of feet. But um, oh, a little bit. Like the one I've got, which is one of the smallest ones, it only does like a, a three foot by three foot area. So you, it's got a little thing in the top where you could plug in rows of them. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I understand some people, you know, who are growing certain crops would probably have banks of these and uh, keep them on all the time in, in the loft or somewhere like that. 
Mm. Mm. It's just for just for growing your tomatoes and things, which are absolutely legal. Then you just um, <laughs> just, <take one. laughs> and just put it over. But it works. Yeah, it works really well. That's it's um, oh, it doesn't use very much power either. No. So that's yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? With the old, old, you know, systems, the old lighting, it used to be quite expensive, really, didn't it? It's a bit mm, prohibitive. Yeah. Whereas I think these LEDs now are much more, um, you know, much more cost effective, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. it's going to last a long time. Actually, they don't, um, one of the advantages is supposed to be that they don't produce much heat. So I suppose they're not wasting power by producing heat. But actually, the heat's quite useful, isn't it, when you're generating seedlings? So I don't, don't get quite as much heat from the lights anymore. So I've got a um, salt. Sort of it might need some bottom heat then. Yeah, yeah, I think mm. so. Yeah, but, yeah, very good for tomatoes and peppers and things early in the year. Because you can plug it into a timer and have it on as long as you like. So try and extend the day so you get at least eight hours. It would be quite, quite interesting to do an experiment if you set it up now and actually sewed some stuff under it and some not under it and then just, mm. just, to, just to compare them, just to see what, I mean, obviously this can be, should be a yeah. big difference, which is yeah. quite interesting yeah. to do it, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. Fine things don't stretch so much as they do, you know, in a window seal, on a window seal, because you've got yeah. light all around and it's the right sort of light, so it's quite good. So, yeah, doing that. What about your onions? Have you sown your onions yet? You're supposed to be out there boxing day sowing your onions. No, Look, I've got some garlic in that I put in in the autumn. Uh, quite actually, I think it was December by the time I put them in, quite late. But um, they haven't really come up yet, so <laughs> that's another one I'm keeping an eye on. Yeah, <laughs> you do this, don't you? You think, is it going to come up? Is it going to go? And then one day it comes up, and you're actually almost amazed. Oh, yeah, it does work. Yeah, they come up. You give them the right conditions. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I've got some in the poly tunnel that have um, got some some garlic or onions. Garlic. Yeah, and that, that's because it's obviously it's a bit warmer in there, so that's that's you know got little shoots yeah. on. Um, but I'm trying some. We, we bought some from um, one of the supermarkets, and it was so lovely. We thought, oh, you know, you're not supposed to really, are you? Just, plant supermarket garlic and it's it's not always good for outdoors especially I suppose because you don't know if it's suitable for our climate but I thought they're so nice we stick some in so we just oh. put a bowl of them as well just to see what happens interesting to see what happens yeah mm -hmm. indoors, so maybe it would be a little bit better for it but mm -hmm. uh, normally you get buying them from from a supplier so you get um, varieties that are better for our for our U horrible UK climate at the moment. Mm. Well, it's swinging, isn't it? One day it's very frosty, the next is very wet. Yeah, and I think yeah. we've got a lot of wind and rain coming, especially up north. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh, well, we've got to hope for better weather. Better weather mm. soon. But um, it's certainly filling the water butts. And at least it's not... No, it's not been no, not been no, that we haven't had any snow this way, have we? Lincolnshire. No. <clears throat> yeah, north, I think, but yeah, not so bad here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, nice to nice to catch up, chaps. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, look, nice all, the autumn's go next month. It will be a lot more busy. All systems more time. go. Yeah. yeah, it will. It's just the, it's just the kind of just getting ready this stage, isn't it? And then it's yeah. all go. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I shall. Um, yeah, get sewing. There'll be no room in the greenhouse by the time we get to the end of March. Uh, all on the window sills, but just at the moment, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for a bit. Yeah, it's, it's the, the lull before the before the growing storm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeff. Yeah. Nice talking okay, to you. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Speak soon. Speak yeah. soon. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye. Yes. Hope you enjoyed. I well, hope you enjoyed the podcast, uh, everybody. And um, do go to um, do do visit our website where we've got all of our podcasts. So this was number one hundred and sixteen. So there's plenty there, and we've also got some interviews with some great gardeners that you can catch up on, um, as well as the website itself. 
And if you like what we do and like what you hear, if you um, check out the magazine as well, which is you can find at www.classicmagazines.co.uk. Um, we've got some great subscription offers, as always. Um, and with every subscription, you get free seeds. So um, do go and have a look and check that out. Um, but for now, um, thanks very much for listening. Bye. If you've enjoyed this video, press the like button and also give us a comment to let us know what you're doing in the garden at the moment. And if you like our videos generally, it'd be really great if you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel.